You know, something really strange happened with this comet today. And honestly, at this point, even the folks at NASA are starting to run out of ways to brush this off as just normal comet stuff. Every single time this thing looks like it's finally settling down and behaving itself, it just completely flips the script on us. Like clockwork. Just when you think you've got it figured out, boom, something new happens. And look, what they caught today might actually be the clearest sign yet that this comet isn't just fading away into the darkness like we expected. It's still actively changing, still evolving right before our eyes. So here's what's new, and trust me, this one's different. Before we continue, if this has your attention, you can subscribe, turn on notifications, and hit like anytime. And for the best viewing, switch to full screen and enjoy what's coming next. For the last few days, everyone's been obsessing over how this comet is venting material. You know the jets shooting out, the thrust it's creating. All these weird changes happening in that fuzzy cloud of gas and dust around it that we call the coma. That's been the main focus. How much stuff is it losing? Where's it going? Why does it keep changing? But today's update isn't about any of that. It's not about how much material it's spewing out into space. Today, it's about how the thing is actually moving. How it's rotating. How it spins. So this morning, when the tracking centers pulled in all the latest measurements of where this comet is in space and started crunching the numbers, they noticed something. It was subtle at first, but once you see it, you can't unsee it. The spin state has changed. Now, they didn't literally watch the nucleus tumbling around like a rock spinning through space. That's not how they figured this out. They saw it in the light, in the brightness patterns. For days now, the rotation period had looked pretty stable. You know how when a comet spins, and it's got an irregular shape, the amount of light we see changes as different parts face us? That creates this brightness curve, this pattern that repeats every time it completes one rotation. And for a while there, that pattern had settled into a nice, predictable rhythm. One cycle, every few hours. There were small variations, sure, but nothing crazy. Nothing that made anyone raise an eyebrow. Today's data broke that rhythm completely. When they took the new brightness measurements and tried to line them up with the old rotation period, you know, basically stacking one rotation on top of another to see if the pattern matches, it didn't line up cleanly anymore. The peaks in brightness that were hitting at the same point in the rotation cycle yesterday are now arriving early today. Just by a little bit, but consistently. That's the key word here, consistently. So that's the first red flag waving in everyone's face. The comet's rotation period is getting shorter, it's spinning faster. Now, we're not talking about some massive change here. We're talking about fractions of a second per cycle. But here's the thing. When you've got a comet that's spinning hundreds of times, those fractions of a second start to add up. They become noticeable. They become measurable. They become concerning. Something is actively spinning this comet up making it rotate faster. Now look, spin-up from jets isn't exactly unheard of in the comet world. This happens. Comets can literally change their own day length when they've got vents acting like little off-center rocket thrusters. Material shoots out from one spot, and because of basic physics, conservation of angular momentum, it pushes the comet in the opposite direction. Over time, that can speed up or slow down the rotation. We've seen this before. But here's where it starts getting really weird, and this is where you need to pay attention. At the exact same time that the rotation period is shrinking, getting shorter, the actual shape of the brightness curve is changing too. And not in a small way. Yesterday's rotation cycle had one big, dominant peak in brightness, and then one smaller bump. Pretty straightforward. Today's cycle? That smaller bump is growing. It's catching up. It's almost matching the main peak now. In other words, there's a second active region on the nucleus that's becoming just as important as the first one. A second major source of jets and venting. What that tells us is that the torque being applied to this comet, the twisting force that's changing how it spins, isn't just getting stronger. It's also being applied in a way more complex pattern now. Think about it. Two big jets firing at different angles on a spinning lumpy chunk of ice and rock that's already been stressed and heated by the sun for months now. Each jet is pushing in a slightly different direction. Each one is adding its own twist to the rotation. It's like trying to spin a top while someone keeps pushing it from two different sides at random intervals. But wait, there's more. Because of course there is. This comet can't just do one weird thing at a time. 
The new high contrast images that came out today show something we haven't been able to see this clearly before. There's this faint, twisting structure in the inner coma, right close to the nucleus. It looks like a corkscrew, like a spiral. In the normal images, you know, the regular photos, it just looks like a slightly messy, fuzzy halo around the solid part of the comet. Nothing special. But when you really enhance the contrast and mathematically subtract out the average background glow of the coma, this spiral pattern just pops right out. It's there in the dust closest to the nucleus, and that spiral is telling us two really important things at the same time. First, it means the jets are strong enough and persistent enough that they're actually carving out these repeating structures as the comet spins around, like a cosmic lawn sprinkler, but instead of water, it's dust and gas. And instead of watering your grass, it's creating these beautiful spiral patterns in space. Second, and this is crucial, the spin rate is high enough now, and it's increasing fast enough, that those spirals are getting tighter, more wound up, compared to what we saw in earlier images. The tighter the spiral, the faster the spin. It's basically a visual confirmation of what the brightness data is already telling us. So now we can line up three solid facts that all point to the same conclusion. The rotation period is definitely shrinking. The comet is spinning faster. A second major active region has spun up and is now contributing significantly to the overall activity, and the dust patterns around the nucleus are forming this tighter, more pronounced spiral structure. Put all of that together, and you get what NASA tucked into their update today, almost like they didn't want to make too big a deal out of it. This comet isn't just changing in how bright it looks or what shape its tail has, it's changing how fast it spins. Its fundamental rotation is evolving. And that, my friends, is not some throwaway detail we can ignore. This is actually really important, and here's why. Comet nuclei, these ancient chunks of ice and rock and dust, they have a breaking point. They're not solid. They're not like billiard balls. They're more like loosely packed snowballs that have been sitting in a freezer for billions of years. They're porous. They're weak. They're held together by basically ice and their own very weak gravity. If a comet spins too fast, the material it's made of literally can't hold itself together anymore. The centrifugal force becomes too much. Surface layers can start to slide. Those weird equatorial ridges some comets have can slump and collapse. And in the most extreme cases, the entire nucleus can just fracture, split apart, break up. We've actually seen this happen with other comets in our own solar system. The pattern is always the same. Slowly increasing spin rate, everything seems fine, and then suddenly, boom, break up. The comet just falls apart. And here's the part that should really make us all sit up and take notice. This comet is doing all of this after everything else. It's already survived. Think about what it's been through. It went through perihelion, its closest approach to the sun. That's when comets get absolutely blasted with solar radiation and heat. It shot out these absolutely massive jets of material. We're talking about venting on a scale that surprised everyone. It completely reshaped its coma multiple times, like it was redecorating its appearance every few days. It shifted the direction of its thrust, changing how the jets were pushing it around. It flickered back and forth between totally different activity modes, switching on and off like someone was playing with a cosmic light switch. And now, on top of surviving all of that, on top of making it through, this entire gauntlet of chaos and activity, it's quietly, steadily increasing its rotation rate. There are really only a couple of ways this could play out from here. In the best case scenario, if the jets somehow manage to stabilize, if those two dominant active regions we're seeing keep firing in a more or less balanced way, then maybe, just maybe, the spin-up will hit some kind of new equilibrium. The torques could average out over time. The forces could balance. And this comet could leave our solar system as a slightly faster spinning version of itself, but still fundamentally intact. Still in one piece. But if the pattern keeps changing, and let's be honest, that seems more likely given everything we've seen so far. If new vents start opening up in different locations, if the thrust direction shifts again, if that spiral structure we're seeing keeps tightening and getting more extreme, then we're heading into territory where the nucleus is going to be under some really serious mechanical stress. Just imagine for a second what we're dealing with here. This is an ancient object, right? 
It's been traveling through interstellar space for who knows how long, getting bombarded by cosmic rays, getting its surface hardened by radiation. That outer layer is probably pretty tough, but inside, inside it's likely already cracked, already fractured from thermal stress, from the temperature changes it experienced coming into our solar system. Now that object, that already damaged, already stressed chunk of primordial ice and rock is being forced to rotate faster and faster as it continues to shed material and vent gases. The jets keep firing, the spin keeps increasing, the stress keeps building. At some point, and this is just basic physics, something has to give, something has to break. Right now, NASA isn't using the word breakup in any of their official communications. They're being very careful with their language, as they should be. They're saying things like measurable evolution in rotation state and new evidence of changing internal torques. Very technical, very precise, very non-alarmist. But if you read between the lines, if you understand what they're really saying, the message is pretty clear. This comet just changed again. And this time, the change is happening to its rotation, to its spin. And that's the one thing, the one single parameter that can literally tear a comet apart if it goes too far, if it crosses that threshold where the structural integrity can't keep up with the mechanical forces. Over the next few days, maybe the next couple of weeks, the entire observing campaign is going to be laser-focused on tracking this. Every telescope that can see this thing is going to be watching. They're going to be collecting more light curves, more brightness measurements over time, to track the rotation period as precisely as humanly possible. Every fraction of a second matters now. They're going to be taking more deep exposure. Images. Stacking multiple photos together to bring out faint details, specifically to see if that spiral structure continues to grow sharper and more defined, or if it starts looking more chaotic and disorganized. And they're going to be doing more orbit refinements, more precise calculations of where this comet is and where it's going. Because here's something most people don't realize. A spinning venting comet doesn't just change its day length. It changes its trajectory, too. Those jets pushing material out are also pushing the comet itself, ever so slightly altering its path through space. The faster it spins, the more complex those forces become. If the rotation period keeps drifting downward, if the spiral keeps tightening up, if those brightness peaks start splitting even further apart as the two active regions become more and more dominant, then we'll know for sure that today wasn't just a one-off anomaly. It wasn't just a weird measurement or a quirk in the data. It was the beginning of something new, a new phase, a phase where this comet isn't just changing how it looks from our perspective here on Earth. It's not just about pretty pictures or interesting light curves anymore. It's changing how it holds itself together on the most fundamental physical level. And that's what makes this so fascinating and, honestly, a little bit nerve-wracking. Because we're watching this process unfold in real time. We're seeing an interstellar visitor, something that came from beyond our solar system, something that formed around a completely different star, potentially billions of years ago. We're watching it go through these dramatic changes right before our eyes. Will it stabilize? Will it find some new equilibrium state and continue on its journey out of our solar system, just spinning a bit faster than before, but otherwise intact? Or will it fracture? Will we witness something that none of our comet models and playbooks can fully predict? Will this thing do something we've never seen before because it's fundamentally different from the comets we're used to studying? That's the question everyone is asking now. That's what keeps the scientists up at night, checking the latest data, running new simulations, trying to predict what comes next. Because whatever NASA reported today, whatever they found in that brightness data and those spiral patterns, one thing is absolutely crystal clear. This comet hasn't finished changing yet. Not by a long shot. The story isn't over. We're still in the middle of it, watching it unfold. And honestly, nobody knows exactly how it's going to end.